EPA and WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchage here with your outlook for December 10th, 2020. We are Thursday expecting mostly sunny skies in the wake of the system that we moved through yesterday that actually overperformed in many areas. We had the uh, areas further south pegged pretty well with the coating to half inch stuff, but you had some areas in our, our central regions from the Lehigh Valley and uh, parts of central in, uh, interior of central New Jersey and points north up through the Poconos that overperformed yesterday for a change. You usually don't get too many of those, but we had a bit of an over overperformer and uh, a lot of areas saw uh, around an inch or so of snow from uh, at least the northern part of the Lehigh Valley and points north. And then once you get up in the Poconos, some areas got two, three inches of snow and some even locally higher than that in a few spots. So a decent amount of snow and a, a little bit of a surprise there with that. But uh, uh, for those of you that are snow starved after last season, that was a nice little surprise to start uh, kick off this year. Now today, 540 line has now moved up to the north and east. So we have the milder temperatures. We're on the milder side today and uh, temperatures are going to increase to the upper 40s to near 50 degrees. Uh, again, mostly sunny skies today, and then mostly clear overnight tonight with excellent aurora viewing, if that is your thing. If you're looking for, uh, try to catch a, a glimpse of the northern lights that have been advertised that could possibly make it as far south as, as Pennsylvania. Uh, the the uh, conditions for viewing that will be optimal overnight here with mostly clear skies expected, but will be cold overnight. Temperatures getting back into the 20s in most locations. Once you get to Friday, we are partly cloudy and uh, temperatures are going to be increasing a little bit further into the lower 50s. And uh, we'll have uh, mostly cloudy skies overnight Friday night and uh, pretty much most of Saturday. I think uh, Saturday should remain dry in most areas, mostly cloudy. We have some showers in eastern areas uh, by the shore points that could take place near, uh, near here on Saturday. Uh, but uh, warm front moves through, so we'll remain mostly cloudy, and uh, temperature can increase, keep stepping up to about the middle 50s or thereabout here on Saturday. Uh, but again, mostly cloudy skies, and then this is the cold front moving toward the region that will come through and bring showers to the region, just light showers, but showers nevertheless. That'll come through on Saturday night, or part of Saturday night, and into early Sunday morning. There's very little shown here on the latest GFS run. This is a new one this evening. Uh, that's running and it doesn't have a lot of precipitation with it and I think any precipitation that you have with that even though we're carrying these low chances for Sunday morning are just for the morning it doesn't look like we're dealing with this in the afternoon at all uh, the cold fronts are going to come through very very late in the day or evening so the cold air push is going to come in uh, overnight Sunday night going into Monday all right so you will have cold air come in behind this it's going to be Nothing crazy cold behind this, but it's going to be colder, certainly, than it will be uh, for the next couple of days through the weekend. So Sunday, uh, because that cold front comes through later in the day, we're going to still be uh, middle 50s or maybe mid to upper 50s in the far southern areas here on Sunday before the front moves through. Temperatures drop overnight Sunday night, and then Monday we're stuck in the 40s and kind of near average for this time of year here on, uh, on Monday. Uh, we have a system moving off to our south, so we're going to remain partly cloudy here on Monday, and I'm Right now, this is system one of three in the pipeline. I think we this is close enough to watch here, but most models keep this fairly progressive and well south of, southeast of the region. There are, are some ensemble mem members that are bringing it uh, considerably, uh, considerably farther northwest, so we have to keep an eye on this. But right now we're going with a dry forecast on Monday. Again, partly cloudy skies and temperatures uh, cooler into the, into the uh, lower 40s. And then Tuesday we are back to mostly sunny skies. Uh, but temperatures will be uh, right around the 40 degree mark, somewhere around there. Now, where it gets things get interesting is uh, once we get later in the week here, and this is uh, Wednesday. Now, if you look at our local forecast right now, we just we, there's a lot of uncertainty with this period. So right now we have thickening clouds, and we're watching a storm closely for Wednesday. There could be some precipitation on Wednesday, and actually there might be. Uh, so we're not confident enough to put anything in the forecast yet. But this is the new GFS run, and it has... A storm here now right now this is a uh, primarily a rain event shown here on the uh, GFS because this uh, this is another one of those phasing systems that cuts too far westward and so the interior far interior far northwestern parts of our coverage area only would benefit from a little bit of snow from that as it wraps up and heads into New England this is this is too close it needs to phase uh, and instead of taking a track that, that right now on this particular model run it goes right over uh, New Jersey, it's too far in the interior. You need this a little bit further out this way, all right, in order to get something that would be a little bit more 
more wintry. Now, this is just one model run of the GFS. The previous run had nothing at all. There was nothing here. Okay, the uh, European model has this too, the same system. This is heading into Wednesday. You have upper level energy that's sitting up here. Southern stream energy is moved out here, but is moving way too fast and way out in front of it. So the two can't hook up until it's too late. So you really have nothing, not, nothing to see here, Storm, here on the European model. The previous run overnight the night before showed a, uh, a nice swath of snow going straight across the, the uh, southeastern portions of our coverage area because that phase occurred at a little different time. So the point is that trying to get these two so these signals to match up here uh, exactly the way it's going to play out at this range, which is about a week from now, is kind of an effort in futility because it's going to be changing so many different times over the next several days especially. Uh, but this uh, the important thing to note here is if you look back at our long-range outlook from Friday, when here it is, this is on our long-range page, it'll be updated again tomorrow morning, Friday morning, but this was last week's outlook. And if you look on the long-range outlook, we had this storm signal here. This is this storm that we're talking about right here. Uh, low confidence in that, but there was a storm signal nevertheless that we put in here for the 15th and 16th. Guess when that is? 15th and 16th. That's the time frame we're looking at. So... These uh, storm signals we put on here before the models pick them up, and uh, this is this in particular, does look like there's going to be a storm here. Whether it's wintry, whether we get a big storm out of this, or it's something more like the uh, European model has, where it's disjointed, or something like the GFS has here, which is a mostly rain event, but a big a big storm. Or something like the Canadian model had today that had a major snowstorm across most of the area, and some mixing further southeast. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities, but that storm signal is there. This is when we talk about a storm signal. This is it. So we'll have plenty of time to look at this over the next uh, week here, and we'll uh, see if there's something that's going to be wintry out of this. It is possible, at least, uh, like we said, through uh, much of this time ahead, we're heading into a thread the needle situation. We have to time the colder air that's in place at the time to coincide with these storm threats, and this is one of them. We also have a third, I have to mention a third threat. Uh, that would be around the 18th, 19th time frame. So right on the heels of this, there could be something else. So we'll we'll have to watch to see how this all plays out. But there's going to be some plenty of acti activity, plenty of opportunity, and the long range forecast that look awfully warm going forward is going to have a little asterisk next to it because there might be some interference with the polar vortex a little bit uh, that could could uh, help us for maybe later in the month and uh, heading into January. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for December 10th, 2020. Have a great Thursday.